Hi guys, I'm Beck Tech and welcome back to another episode of the Council. Oh yeah, I got my arm chopped I off. sense that Mr. Peru is about to surprise us too. I believed in him. I followed him to the best of my ability. I championed his ideas, defended his decisions, and then, without even realizing it, I became lost. Now that I've told you everything, you want to take my place, do you? No. I am Emily. You are wasting your time. Louis knows very well how to tell us apart. Someone had the bang coming from the Duchess's room, and she isn't answering. Louis... You really must learn to conceal your weaknesses better. If you don't want your foes to use them against you. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. It is the natural order of things, Monsieur de Richet. There have always been men who govern other men. That is simply the way it is. History forgets them with a disconcerting facility. No one speaks about them, and yet they whisper in the ears of kings and presidents. <sighs> oh my gosh. Filthy swine! I'm going to open this damn door and skin you alive. Mom's trying. You're not going to get the better of us. Mother. Louis, you've come around. How do you feel? I, I, it hurts. Mother. I, I, I can't feel my arm. Louis, I had to cauterize it with what I could find. Where's my arm? We'll get through this, Louis. Don't worry. I think I found a solution. You'll see. Uh, we gotta leave. No, no, don't, don't put your arm in there. Louis, we can't leave Mom, without no. it. It's oh. our last chance. I need to see this through to the end. I must do it. Did she get it? We've done it, Louis. Oh, thanks, Mom. Look. Stubborn as a mule. Come on, up you get. I'll help you. Easy does it. You've lost a lot of blood. Uh, and now what? Let's take what we came for. Imagine if she lost the other arm. <laughs> yeah, I want to know. Wait, I've got to know what I did wrong. That is one fearsome mechanism. In fact, if I hadn't watched you beforehand, I would never have found the right combination. Tell me, where did I go wrong? I got the nails right, surely. Um... What did you do once you uncovered the iris? I matched the icon of the Crown of Thorns with the town of Golgotha, where the crucifixion took place. Damn. I was sure I'd figured out how the lock worked. Of course, Louis. But you still had to choose the right theme oh. from the start. It was the crucifixion. I matched its symbol, the crown of thorns, to the place where Christ was nailed to the cross, Golgotha. Then I had to link the crown of thorns to the date of the crucifixion, according to the exegesis. But I failed to understand the first time. With that theme in mind, I chose 26M, which represents the 26th of March. To conclude, I had to use the armillary sphere to find the moon corresponding to the day of the crucifixion, which turned out to be in the first quarter. All that was left to do was to link all those elements on the same axis. See, I thought I had, at first I thought I had mine right, but the moon threw me off completely. I adjusted my answer and I still couldn't get it and I gave up and yeah, I lost my hand. But mum got it. Thank you, mum. But where are we? I don't know, but we better not hang around. Do you know what we're looking for? We have to find that weapon. What do you know about the Holy Lance, Louis? The what? The Lance of Longinus the Centurion. Yes, the Centurion that pierced the side of Christ with his lance. 
that weapon naturally became a holy relic. Exactly. Seriously? You don't really believe that fable, do you? Every fable is founded on true events. I'm not saying that everything adds up, but imagine if it really did exist. Very well. Now what? Well, now you know what you need to find. Pardon? I have to get to the wharf to prepare our departure. Let's get off this cursed island as quickly as we can. We shall come back when we are ready and armed. But hang on. Louis, let's first get to safety. We shall come back when we have the upper hand. Fear not. You take care of getting the lance. It's imperative. I'll take care of preparing our departure. Hang on. At least tell me everything you know about this lance. But I have never seen it. There's nothing else I can say, Louis. Well, you can always go snooping around Mortimer's study. I remember seeing paintings of Longinus there. One more thing. If they find you in possession of the lance, they won't let you get away with it. Choose only one and hide it under your jacket so you don't get caught with it. Then run and meet me on the wharf. And if I get caught? If they catch you in possession of the lance, we're all doomed. Do you understand? Perfectly. Good. And go talk to Piaggi. He's the one who probably knows the most about this. Did she just say this multiple lances? Hey. Oh, my arm! I look at my little stump. <laughs> uh, let's not talk about it. Spooky. Very spooky. <coughs> Excuse me. I can see that this spear has a, a so-called leaf shape, but is copper rimmed. I can see the tip is engraved with the symbol of the Eye of Ra. There are several spearheads. I need to find clues to pick the right one. Oh, okay. Piaggi knows something about it for sure. Should I go speak to Piaggi first? Oh uh, yeah, duh, but like, should I explore first? This place is pretty big. Um, this one has no name. I wonder who it was for. Me. Flavius Aetius. But how did he end up here? Uh, he was a demon. I don't know. Maybe these guys are all demons that have passed away. We can see that this lance has a leaf shape and... Well, it's in gold. I can see that a crucifix is engraved on the tip, just barely visible. Okay, so that's a crucifix, gold, and then the other one was copper, wasn't it? Okay. I can see this lance has a spear shape. It is copper rimmed, and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. Okay. Christian fish, copper. The sarcophagus Mortimer. of Lord Mortimer. Whoa. Um, didn't Mortimer have a dad or a granddad named the... It's the only exactly. sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. Let's see what we can find here. Uh, uh, oh, it's far too heavy. I'm not going to be able to do it on my own. Well, yeah, it, maybe if I had both hands. Wait, it's open now. What the hell? There's oh, a it was of open just before. Ah. Yeah, what the hell? When I turn around, it's open. And is it open again? Yeah, it's open again. What's it say? Zippy. Nope. Can't read that. Oh, another dagger far out. There's four. Let me let me guess. Gold. Well, we can see that this lance has a particular spear shape. It is coated in gold. You can distinguish the right. symbol of the fish engraved on the tip, barely noticeable. Oh. Oh, got a nail. <laughs> oh, that is really disorientating. Beep. 
The Bible must mean the lance which finally took the life of Christ. Oh. Four Gospels each give an account of the death of Christ. Let's see what they can tell me about the lance. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a shimmering lance pierced his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water. And he that saw it bore witness. And his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. A shimmering lance? What is this telling me? The medieval hermetic traditions evoked the idea of using noble materials for relics, which the monasteries often made themselves in order to attract pilgrims. Of course, they had to inspire greatness. So here, we might think of gold, whereas a centurion could not have hoped for anything better than copper at the time. The true lance would not have been a luxurious weapon. Oh, so it would have been copper. I'm gonna put copper. Question mark. Oh gosh, the maze. I don't know. You know, I miss the old days where we'd eat here together like a happy little family and now everyone is just killing each other. Oh, George. Hey, man. What's up? Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening. I'm back on the trail of my mother again. I don't have time to explain, but... Would you know anything about the Holy Lance? I... Ah, uh, that's good news. But be careful, Louis. You might end up getting noticed. Do you know anything or not? No, I regret I don't. But why not ask von Wallner? Theology is his field, after all. That's an idea. In that case, I'll try and find him. You are keeping up the good work, I see. But I'm telling you, keep your guard up. Everyone is rather on edge right now. You're right. Thanks for everything, Mr. President. See you later. Okay, thanks for the heads up, George. That noise. What's that? <laughs> Swiping. Pardon me, monsieur, but I have work to do. Hmm. Okay. This is Piagi's room? Yeah. Okay, let me... You know what? No, no, no. I'll speak to Piagi and get that over and done with. And then I'll go Colonel's speak to not Emily. His room. I bet he went back to stuffing himself. True. He's a big boy. I've never been in here. I've never been able to get into his bloody room before. It's always been locked. Wait, I just realized George didn't ask me about my missing arm. He was just so chill. <laughs> the Lying Girl by Boucher. Here's a painting of mischievous eroticism. I wonder what Piaggi must think of this. <laughs> I wonder. Love Triumphant by Caravaggio. Now there's someone for whom the sex of angels is no mystery. Why is there so much sexual stuff in his room? Venus and Cupid with a satyr by Correggio. Innocence, indiscretion, and lechery. Giuseppe must love that. Hmm. My room! Is Emily waiting for me? Inferno by Dante. Shush, I don't care. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Okay, so... Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very you done jolly. talking? You done talking? Okay, thank you. So, everyone has something... Like, the paintings in their room has something to do with the, the person... Uh, George Washington, I think he has a couple of presidents, presidential paintings in his room, whereas Piaggi, for example, has the Pope, a couple of nudie, reedy ones in his bedroom, uh, and, um, what's his name? Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, he had a lot of, uh, I think it was kings and all that jazz in his room. So why have I got people eating babies in my room? Just some... Kinky shit. 
And Peru has very violent paintings, I'd like to add. It seems like he isn't here. Hmm, great. So, let's see what Volner has in his bookcase. Uh, a few works on religions, two scientific essays about human thought. Most of these works are on alchemy. Longini Militis Fabulum. Ah, what have we here? It looks like a kind of biography on Longinus the Centurion. Truly, Volner has done everything he can to get information about that lance. Mm, I'd better keep this one, though. <gasps> Dirty shit. Damn. That's all I need. Maybe he knows something about the lance. What happened? You, you've lost. Oh, how horrible! <laughs> he knows. I, it's an accident. To tell you the an truth, accident? I. Accident? Are you joking? You have lost your hand, Louis. We've got to do something. It's been done. I've been given treatment. Rest assured. I admit that I didn't truly realize the consequences of my recklessness. So just stay calm. Yes, yes, of course. But Louis. It's your hand! I know. Please, look, there's nothing I can do about it. I know. I made a mistake, but it's too late now. It was an accident. I only wanted to inspect the place to find my mother, and, well, I fell into a trap. The result is appalling, I, I grant you that, but at least I can guarantee that we're all perfectly safe here on this island. And you joke about it? Am I dreaming? No, sir, but let's be realistic. So many world leaders brought together in one place, and there are no safeguards? The error indeed stems from my recklessness. I went looking here and there in search of my mother, and I had an accident. It's my own fault. Fine. We will drop this uh, incident. <laughs> Why are you here? What are you doing in my room? Oh, 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 okay. Sir, perfect timing. I, I was looking for you. You were looking for me? Well, <laughs> here I am. What can I do for you? I was wondering if you might help me. You're the one looking for the lance. No, Don't I... take me for a fool. You are looking for the holy lances. Oh. Not at all. I, I've come here to talk to you about the Al-Azif. Ach, you are lying through your teeth. You are not here for the Al-Azif. No, of course not. Well, what makes you think that? You are a very bad liar, my lad. Don't think you're going to get away with it so easily. What are you playing at, Richet? Mortimer's the one who has that cursed lance. How long have you been looking for it? Ah, I see. You want it, and so you plan to steal it from Mortimer. Say for a G? long time. Isn't that right? Why, you little swine! You're planning to give it to Sir Gregory. You're looking to double-cross me and Piaggi too. What on earth is he talking about? Oh, shit. Mr. Von Volner, would you be so kind as to calm yourself down, please? All I'm trying to do is make amends for his eminence's errors. Sir Gregory should surround himself with better people, if you want my opinion, but Piaggi is a friend of my mother's. What? I... you want to help, Piaggi? I just told you, that's what my mother would do if she was here. I heard you in the corridor, and mm, he seemed to be in serious trouble because of the lances. I'm only trying to help him. Ah. All right, Louis. I thought you were trying to manipulate me. But please, uh, excuse me. I got a little bit uh, carried away. But you can't get ahead by staying in the shadows on a case like this. There are already several of us searching for the Lance of Longinus. And it would be smarter to pool our information. Unfortunately, I've barely made any progress. I'm still trying to find out what the original Lance really looked like. Ah, let me reassure you, we've all been there, given the number of copies there are in existence. It also took us quite some time to discover its true shape. Many believe the central part of the head of the Lance to be covered in gold, whereas, in truth, its center is made of an alloy oh, yeah, of copper, copper and iron. Yeah. That does make sense. In those times, a centurion wouldn't have any chance of possessing a lance made of gold. Ah, that is the perversion of Christian idolatry. A copper lance could not have been noble enough to pierce the side of Christ. Anyway, 
Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Rui. But keep me posted as to your research. We're bound to end up recovering it. I'm counting on it. See you later. I managed to get the biography of Longinus as Centurion. Let's see what it can teach me. Hmm. An interesting passage here tells me that the lance is engraved with the symbol fish. of the first Christians. The fish. Awesome. Also, I'd like to comment that he he gave a crap about me missing an arm, but George didn't. My good mate George. <laughs> Oh, wrong button. Hey. What can I do for you, sir? Yeah, you can tell me where Piaggi is. I am at your service, day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with no. me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Yeah, Piaggi. Of course, sir. What would you require? Piaggi! What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe, sir. And I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend, sir, a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. Hang on, but it's mine. Beg pardon, sir? It's my book. I'm telling you, it's my book. With all due respect, sir, I hope sir will understand that I have doubts. You see, I found it in Lord Mortimer's library. Huh. There you are, then. That's exactly where I left it. I am... Quite put out, sir. I don't know what to say. In that case, I suggest you say nothing and hand it over. But I... Now. But, sir, I... Very well, sir. Here you are. May, sir, take good care of it. It is damaged. And you've damaged it as well? Well, bravo. Bravo. No, no, I didn't do anything. It wasn't me, sir. Say pardon. Pardon me, sir. <laughs> Very good. There were some other things I wanted to go over with you. I'm terrible. I'm a... Terrible person. See, I tried to get him to give me that book earlier in the game, but I didn't, I didn't have the skills. Being an asshole gets you places, apparently. <laughs> or gets you books. Gosh! God damn, where the hell is this guy? Ah. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, surely Piaggi is in this room. Eating. Oh, what the hell? That's not where the food is, mate. <laughs> I've been looking all over for you. Oh my gosh. Push. Your Eminence, would you have a moment to spare? Not now, Louis. Please, leave me alone. I beg your pardon? I want to be alone. Very well, I... I'm only searching for information about the Lance of Longinus, the soldier. If you, you could- not listening to me. You are playing with fire. Hmm. I see what you mean. Louis, don't push it. Leave while you still can. Your Eminence, are you all right? Your Eminence, are you with me? Can you turn around, please? What do you want to know about the Holy Lance, Louis? Your Eminence, turn around. This is the weapon used by a Roman centurion. On the very day Christ was nailed to the cross. Look at me. Longinus thrust his lance in the right side of Jesus. Please. As you wish. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to jump scare me. His nose is bleeding. So you are looking for the holy lance of Longinus, are you? Oh, shit. No, no, I, I was wondering about it myself. Oh, Louis, it's even worse than I thought. I believe you when you say you only come to find out more. But in that case, it means that Sarah didn't even tell you the point of it all. Because, believe me, you are looking for it. You are looking for the lands. You should know you are not the only one, Lord Mortimer has spent a good part of his life and his fortune trying to find it. Never will he let you have it. But tell me, before going any further, have you spoken to anyone else about this? Uh, I'm gonna say no. 
No, you are the first I've spoken to about it, Your Eminence. Come now, Louis. Are you quite sure of that? Uh... Well, I'm gonna say well now. Because that's the truth. Maybe. It is the truth. Well, I spoke to Mr. Von Volno about it. Why? Because you are endangering all those who know anything about this lands, Louis. Anyone else? No. Why can't I say that's all? That's bullshit. Mm, briefly with President Washington. What does he know exactly? Absolutely nothing. He advised me to speak to Mr. Von Volner. Very well. Is that all? Yes. Haha, <laughs> now I can say it. No one else. What are you going to use the lance for, exactly? Oh, uh, 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 um... To protect myself. Uh. I need it. Why? You won't understand. <sighs> Try me, Louis. I need to protect myself with it. Louis, I thank you for your sincerity. I shall answer you about Longinus. You deserve to be told. His spearheaded lance did indeed pierce the side of the Messiah. His blood gushed out, covering the head of the lance. It was covered in the blood of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Your Eminence. You are welcome. Be careful, Louis. You are on a perilous path. Don't follow Sarah's demons, my boy. Don't delve too deeply into her delusions or you won't be able to come back. The demons that she is frantically trying to drive away are in her own mind. Take good care of yourself. God keep you. I would like to uh, mention he had a blood nose. So I'm not as special as I expected. I thought I was the only one with these visions, and if he's got a blood nose, then that's evidence that he's also having these strange visions as well. Interesting. Yeah, by the way, why didn't you worry about my arm? You notice anything's missing? Huh? You got nothing to say? You know, I'm, I'm, I don't, I, I'm not missing any limbs or anything, Piaggi. Looks like the only person here who cares about me is Walner. Honestly, when he's like, he was um, not keen on turning around. I thought he was going to turn around and have like zombie face or something. I was like, oh no, man. Not a zombie game. <laughs> okay, we got to speed headed. And it had the fish. And it was copper. I think it was this one. I can see this lance has a spear shape. Yeah. It's copper rimmed. Yep. And it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish yep. on the tip. That's it. Am I absolutely sure this is the one to take? Yes. I'm I'm certain that's the one. Now what? Join your mother at the wharf. Oh yes, we're gonna make it the skipping. We're gonna get busted. Oh shit, I have not found all the clues enabling me to identify the lance of Logoninius. Uh, oh, okay. I missed a couple of clues about what dagger, oh uh, sorry, what lance to grab, but I'm pretty certain I've got the right one. Sticking your nose everywhere again. Wow, what's the matter with him? Excuse me, monsieur. I don't follow you. I haven't come all this way just to fail so close to the goal. Why? What are you talking about? I am talking about what you are doing. This conference is going to boost my career. There is no question of me letting you ruin everything. I just surprised Piaget and Volner talking. You are about to rob Mortimer! Give me what you took from him, immediately! Oh shit. Let's keep calm, please. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll have to cut this short, quick. Yeah, fuck off. Punch him? 
Oh, uh, that uses all my points. Look, this is making make sense. I don't know what you're going on about, and I don't have time for this right now. Don't think on getting rid of me so easily, Dorichet. Where have you been? Did Lord Mortimer tell you you could trust me? Yes, but... So? I'm working for him right now, and you're wasting my time with your questions. I... Look, if he hasn't taken you into his confidence, then you shouldn't know yet. I'll soon figure out what you are up to. And I am convinced that you have indeed robbed Mortimer. The game is up. Give me what you took from him. You know, this is becoming an obsession with you. Show me what you are carrying, or I will call the servants. Give him a rare manuscript. Give him a rare object. I want to give him my stuff. <laughs> I have tons of golden elixirs. Let's All give right, him one of those. You win. Here. Oops. This is what I stole from Lord Mortimer. Sorry if it might you have... You must really take me for a fool. These things are everywhere oh, in the map. I know. I know perfectly well. It is not what you are hiding. Okay. You leave me no choice. No, no, no. Come with me. Make it. <gasps> what is this? Oh. Hit him. Hit him. No. Hell no. That's... Oh, shit. <laughs> Run! <laughs> that was awesome! Well done, Louis. I'm so proud of you. Oh, just slap the bastard. Alright, so... Na uh, Napoleon Bonaparte knows that I have the lance. That's probably not good. No. Oh, I need to go outside. Oh. Ah, Louis. Perfect timing. As luck would have it. Come, my boy. I would like to have a word with you. Can I make a run for it? <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, Lord Mortimer is asking for you. Mm. Yeah, but I've got <clears throat> need to go to the bathroom. Come, excuse we have to me, door. Monsieur. We cannot <clears throat> let you pass. I'm freaking screwed. <clears throat> Come closer, please. It's time we had a little chat. I wanted you. Oh no, your hand. Thank Daddy, you for no. caring. So that's it. She is prepared to use you. What do you mean? It wasn't enough for her to lose her hand. She had to make you lose yours, too. I cannot permit this to continue. Louis, it's time you found out the truth. I've been observing you since you arrived. I see you running all over the grounds in the search of Sarah. I would like to prevent her from leading you even further down the wrong road. The wrong road? Louis, Sarah has made her own choices of her own free will, and I would like for you to have the same chance. You see, Sarah and I have known each other for a very long time, Louis. I am aware of her theory. About me? About Gregory? About the demons? Ah, uh, say nothing. She's right. What? Look at okay. me. Okay. I have inhabited this body since 1191. For the last 602 years, I have been this dear William Mortimer. Holy shit, he's being like honest. <laughs> yeah, I'm a demon. You've been Mortimer for 600 years? How long have the demons been among mankind? Oh, I don't think I'd be lying if I said that we have always been here. And you truly have the power to manipulate the thoughts of men. That's right. Every demon has the capacity to infiltrate the minds of men and to read and steer their thoughts. And what do you do with this power? We help them, of course. Of course you do. And you expect me to believe that, I suppose. Louis. Demon is just a word. It all depends on what exists beneath the surface. I understand that this isn't easy. 
The culture of men is centered on the fact that demons are responsible for all the evils on Earth. But if it's the same in every single culture, then maybe there might be something to it, don't you think? Certainly there is something to it. Control. Man has spent his existence wishing to believe in the supernatural and imposing his belief on others. What could be more convenient for manipulating the masses? A perfect, inaccessible being and a plethora of demons in every one. The perfect idea to relieve men of all responsibility while still finding them guilty. Can you tell me more about your capacities, your supernatural powers? Supernatural? From my point of view, they are perfectly natural. Well, Louis, just because the monkey does not fly doesn't mean that we should consider the bird a supernatural creature. We are all part of a grand design. We are simply made like this. By developing our art, we are able to read thoughts as well as write in the minds of men. It is possible for us to make them bow to our desire, but it doesn't work without leaving some scars. Lucifer, the fallen archangel, left heaven accompanied by 133,306,668 angels. Is it true that there are that many of you? No, I assure you, Louis. Forget your Bible class, it's ridiculous. We are not angels, we don't have wings. There is certainly nowhere near a million of us. And for that matter, no sacred human text represents us correctly. There are several families, and the family to which I belong has eight siblings, including Gregory and myself. Sir Gregory is your brother? Yes, what can I say? <laughs> you can't choose your family. But it is very difficult to know exactly how many of us there are because a large number of our kind remain hidden or never reveal themselves even to us. You're the devil incarnate. The devil? I'm not saying that all Judeo-Christian folklore hasn't served us, but the truth is, of course, something quite different. Please, don't look at us through the primitive prism of religions. I am not hiding any horns or goat's feet, Louis. I have no tail. Excuse me. Why do you bring up folklore? You mean that you've taken advantage of people's beliefs? No, not exactly. I mean that we in fact created them from scratch. It is amazing to see how mankind has such a strong need to believe in something superior to itself. It was very instructive for what was to come. What has my mother got to do with all this? She embarked on a crusade many years ago to kill all the demons. That must have upset you. I imagine you retaliated. No, I'm afraid she never forgave me. Forgave what? We met when she was still just a young woman. I appeared to her in a different form because I didn't want to reveal the identity of Lord Mortimer at that time. She was looking for someone interested in the occult to decipher an ancient book. We spent many years together, until I revealed my true nature to her. The old book was Alazif, wasn't it? Did she speak about it? Not so long ago, yes. Indeed, it was already Alazif. She wanted to unlock the secrets. Why should I trust you? I'm not asking you to, Louis. If you are still in doubt about the demons, I can assure you that won't last long. What? <coughs> Excuse me. Why are you gonna transform? But why me? Why do I tell you about the greatest secret ever revealed to man? It's... that's right. I'm coming to that. Don't worry. Okay. What are the demons' projects for humanity? Our aim has long since been to protect humanity from itself. On the other hand, although we give them the impulse to succeed, we don't all agree as to the path they take to achieve it. How would you qualify your species, scientifically? Hmm, good question. What is your area of expertise? Given the choice, I I'd choose philosophy. So, consider us as an idea. Louis. We are but a word in the minds of men. But this word is capable of anything. 
Empires have been built on words. Continue. Louis, it's time you opened your eyes. Come, you'll soon see. After you. I'd like to pause this for one minute. I know this is silly, but the whole PRG um, having, <coughs> excuse me, the, having the nosebleed kind of has thrown me off a little bit. For a minute there after the last episode, I thought for a moment that I am actually uh, Mortimer's son. It's going to be like a, a Star Wars situation with Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Uh, whereas, yeah, Mortimer is my dad. However, yeah, PRG having the nosebleed um, says that maybe he had a vision as well. So that might not be right. But I would like to say if that's what comes out of this and called it, but I doubt it. Did what happened to Elizabeth Adams have anything to do with you? Mm, unfortunately, the poor girl became an issue between us in spite of herself. A family of demons is still a family, and as in all families, there are disputes. Elizabeth's family, the Adams, has always been under the patriarchal control of my father. As he and myself are not really on very good terms, sending poor Elizabeth here was terribly rude of him, really. You did accept, though? Mm, no, I would say rather I was presented with a fait accompli by Gregory and went along with the intention of helping her. But this is my castle, and everyone is the master of their own home. You killed her. I, I really can't use my points, guys, just in case. But I'm going to take that as, yeah, he killed her. If you could manipulate us mentally, what's the point of all the theatrics of the conference? You must suspect that we asked ourselves that very same question. For many centuries, we didn't organize any conferences. And most of the time, it ended in civil war between demons. Many of us were killed during this period. The idea of organizing conferences was the answer to everything. The interest being to erect some rules among ourselves. Our family first divided up all the principal countries of the world. Now, whenever one of us wanted to propose a major change between these countries, they summoned the demon in question and initiate a conference. The demon that initiates the proposition doesn't have to give notification of the subject of the conference beforehand. Consequently, we participate along with our best assets. Once the humans are brought together, the conference begins, but we are forbidden to use our talents to influence the participants. The first meeting is held in order to expose the subject to all the participants, followed by several days of reflection, during which we are allowed to be persuasive, but not to impose our will. A second meeting closes the conference with a final vote. So, for you it's a game isn't it? I understand your remark, but after living several centuries, you stand back and enjoy what reflection and pleasure you can. But how do you agree on global policy? Locally, we often have competing interests, and sometimes we start wars between men which are linked to our disagreements. Most of the time, our father steps in and gives directives, which my family follow to the letter. Indeed, in my opinion, it is high time we moved on. What do you mean? I mean that a new era must begin. The old monarchic regimes are outdated, and it's time to evolve. So, Von Borchert, he was looking for the Alazif for you. Exactly. Alazif has always belonged to my family, Louis. And with good reason. My father wrote much of it. Can you tell me what you've done with... What? You mean the Alazif? No, I already know that. Sarah came here with it and got rid of it. I was thinking of Von Bortert. He isn't essential, but he is a trusted person. He's a prisoner at our headquarters in Paris. All right. I hope I've answered all your questions, Louis. Come, I have something to show you. There... there is one question that remains to be answered. Why me? Why tell me all of this? Oh, haven't you guessed yet? He's my daddy. Uh, I'm not saying anything about Spear. 
Just in case. I mean, it's obvious you want me on your side, but that doesn't explain why you're telling me all these truths. Louis, this conference is indeed of capital importance to me. And yes, I want you on my side. But that's not the main reason that compels me to confide in you. What is it then? Look, we are of the gods, Louis. Always have been. You, as much as me. You are one of us, Louis. You too are a demon. Are you serious? You know it. Deep down inside, you know I am telling you the truth. Where do you think that natural charismatic presence comes from? Your talent must already have manifested itself somehow. Have you ever had any visions? No. Stop it, it's absurd. Have you never found yourself suddenly inside someone else's body, without knowing why? No. Whilst asleep, maybe? That's how it often happens the first time. Your spirit wanders unconsciously. My mother can't have lied to me about that. It's true. Your real mother would never have lied I... to you. What I... the... What do you what? mean, Louis? I would rather you found this out from her own lips, but it's important that you know. Sarah is not your mother. I... What? I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Louis. But you must know the truth before you commit an irreparable act. No, I... No. It, no, it's not possible. You are my son. I knew it! I knew it! Pause! I knew it! Star Wars! This is freaking Star Wars! Mm. Mm. Fire! Oh, wait, Peru? What are you doing? Well, well. So now you're his bastard! You really took me for a fool. Don't make a move, you clowns! Everybody keep calm. Don't say a word or I'll shoot your kid! Ah, uh, not so clever now, are we? At last I found a way to put the pressure on you, Mortimer. Look, just calm down, monsieur. You stopped me from ending it all. Because of you, I've had to pay for it. You don't know what it's like. He's in your head. He's in your soul. I never want to feel that again. Jack, I did not betray you. You're just like him. Oh, gosh. Monsieur Pelu, I don't even know what this is all about. It's quite simple. You're like them. If that's enough to make me unforgivably evil, then I'd prefer you shoot. But I don't feel as if I've changed. I'm, I'm still the same man I was an hour ago. They will corrupt you. It's inevitable. And I won't be able to resist, like you are now? Uh, well... Give me the benefit of the doubt. Think about it a moment. So, what are you gonna do now? You've just found out your true nature. What difference does it make? Jack, I can assure you that what Lord Mortimer just told me makes no difference. That's what you think. But you're already in his hands. And you don't even know it, Louis. No, Jack. It's the contrary. Everything that's been happening here has been carefully planned by the Golden Order for months. And everything is going exactly as planned. Lower your weapon. It's all right. It's over. You'll make it through. And you're going to get your life back. You're just like him. You are already. You can't see it, or you don't want to see it. But it's already too late. In fact, I haven't got any choice. You always have a choice. You know very well what will happen to you if you shoot me. Jack, I'm the only one who can help you resolve the situation. I'm just asking you to trust me. I'm not against you. <sighs> it's over. Come now, Mr. <laughs> you know what I told you. Evil and good depend on you, and not on your nature. <laughs> yes, it's true, and the same holds true for all of us. Monsieur Peru. I am willing to overlook this latest scene. You can thank my son for that. I think, however, that you ought to take your leave for your good and ours, as well as that of your daughter. Shaken up? You've experienced many significant events since your arrival. <sighs> to tell you the truth, I don't get much time to ask myself those questions. Quite right. Best not to react to all this too suddenly. 
Take some time to think about it all. For now, I think you ought to find Sarah, my son. You ought to talk things over with her. <laughs> Don't call so me that. So she's been lying to me all along? Let her justify herself. What's done is done. Sarah must explain herself. You must clear the air. We'll have all the time we need to talk afterwards. But all in good time. B before you join her, I'd like to give you something. As a demon, I would like to introduce you to your first talent. What do you mean? Open your mind, my son. Relax. You hold immense power. It's already there, inside you. Empty your mind of all thoughts. Just let me show you the way. I should relax. Open your mind. Hear my voice. Feel the vibrations and listen to what has been happening to you deep inside, but which you have been concealing. Trust yourself. It's all already in there. I... I can hear something. Now breathe. It's a sound very, very faint. That's right. Concentrate on it. My voice is growing fainter, but I am here. I... Whispers, words, mixed voices. Mm. Focus on one of them. Don't be afraid. I... I sense a stream. Some words are clear, but not all of them. Let them enter into your mind. I... Hear them. Now, now I can hear a clear voice. Well done, Louis. Congratulations. What was it? You are now able to read people's minds. I... Uh, what? You heard me. From now on, whenever a human speaks to you, you will be able to read their current thoughts. So, if you need to know something in particular from someone, all you have to do is make them think about it. But it, it'd be a violation of their most intimate thoughts, wouldn't it? To begin with, there's nothing obliging you to do it. You already had the ability without even knowing it. I just gave you the option of putting it into practice, if you want. Moreover, it would be wrong to evoke morality here. Every species is different, Louis, and this is the way we are made. That's all there is to it. You are free to use this talent or not. And what's more, it will be up to you to decide what to do with the thoughts you read. That is where the values of right and wrong do come into play. There are also a few rules you need to know that govern this talent when used between ourselves. You can read the thoughts of demons as well as of humans. But be careful. A demon more experienced than yourself will know that you are spying and will often react quite violently. It's considered bad form to play around the psyche of another demon. It's a question of courtesy. But let's be clear. What is most considered bad form is getting caught. So I would advise against trying to read the thoughts of Gregory, for example. Home? Yes, the old grump is touchy and rather a stickler about the conventions. On that note, go and see Sarah, Louis. Otherwise, she might leave without you. We'll continue this discussion later, if you want. Just join me in my study when you've finished. That's cool. Oh, so I could read his voice, read his mind right now. That I don't want to use any points, but I'm sure it'd be something very basic, so I'm going to You're right. miss that. I need to go now. I'm not going to call him dad. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to speak to my mum about it first. She's still my mum. See you later, Lord Mortimer. One more thing. If you want to know the truth about your birth, ask her about Paris, 1763, at 12 Rue des Martyrs. That's where she disemboweled your mother to steal you from me. Uh-oh. That's awkward. I'm going to keep an open mind about this. <laughs> but this is so Star Wars, man. Anyways. Oh my gosh, this is getting crazy. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and I will see you in the next episode. <laughs>
Bye.